special operations still now in its 10th month. So does this look like damage control to you? Well, clearly it does. And I, my assessment is that what Putin does is a matter of routine as he speaks domestically. The international audience, the global international audience that looks at Putin sees him for what he is, which is criminal behavior, international pariah. And I really, frankly, on a personal level, feel very sorry for these women that are essentially being played for suckers. There, it, this is an optic that he wants to have brought forward. Again, these are handpicked ladies. I'm assuming they are legitimate mothers of soldiers. And I don't know that this does anything other than bolster his internal, his domestic support, which, frankly, I don't see that eroding, even though he's mobilized 300,000. We've seen the departure of hundreds of thousands that have gone across the border. But still, that's the crust. That's the elitist crust of what is um, of who we are seeing responding to Putin. I think he is going to continue to march and will continue to conduct this operation, irrespective of what this particular discussion played out for him. Yeah, Russia can put out all of the disinformation it wants about this war, Ambassador, but the mothers of the dead and wounded soldiers, they know the true toll that this war is taking. How worried do you think Putin is when you see him doing this? I think that's the message, Alex. I think that he's very worried. If he's got to go on television and this and this clip is played over and over, you know that that's a problem for him. You know that he's worried about, about the effect of this war, his war of choice, uh, on the Russian people. And it's getting through to the Russian people. It's getting through to the mothers. It's getting through to the soldiers. We see the soldiers or the, the draftees fleeing the country. So he's got big problems in the Russian people, Alex. And he is taking it out on the civilian population. General, this war, as I just said, now in its 10th month, Russia pounding Ukrainian energy and water infrastructure, leaving uh, Ukraine in darkness all across the country. It has made life incredibly difficult. As winter sets in, what do you think this war is going to look like? Will it change very much in the coming months? I think what probably will change is the volume of activity. I would anticipate that the Ukrainians will maintain a continuous set of operations against the Russians. They should, unlike for the past many years when we viewed warfare through the filter of what took place in Afghanistan, we always talked about the fighting season. There is no fighting season in this part of the world, but albeit it will be extremely cold, the ground will get muddy, it will then harden, it will be very difficult to conduct operations, but it's imperative that the Ukrainians continue and I guarantee you the Russians will continue without abatement to continue mm -hmm. to launch drone attacks, artillery attacks, and they're getting their supplies from willing partners in Iran and North Korea, and they're going to their own stockpiles and they're replenishing them. So we're going to see a consistent type of operation, just not as much going forward in the, in the uh, winter months. Ambassador, Ukraine's defense ministry, they shared this photo. It's a young girl in Kyiv forced to go to a gas station so that her family could charge her inhaler. Do you think this targeting of civilian infrastructure could backfire on Putin and, and just drive up more international support for Ukraine? Absolutely do. I absolutely do. This is, uh, as, your, as your reporter indicated, this is this is war, war crimes. Uh, when he attacks civilian infrastructure, when he attacks the, the electricity, the water, uh, this is and, and focused on civilians. This is these are not military targets, Alex. This is this is against civilians. This is war crimes. And that's having exactly what you said. That is enraging not just the Ukrainians, but also the the, the international community that sees this. The, and mm -hmm. this will generate more support. It'll, I am sure it'll generate more humanitarian assistance to the Ukrainians, but it's also going to generate more of the military assistance that they've been getting. We did hear today from the NATO Secretary General speaking on CNN, reacting to the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark Milley, and his recent comments on how this war could end. Take a listen. The Ukrainians are by far paying the highest price for this war. Uh, what we do is measured in money. Uh, what they do is measured in uh, blood, uh, lost lives every day. Uh, so it has to be up to Ukraine to decide. 
General, when this war ends, there will be nego diplomatic negotiations to end it. But does it appear that the U.S. is more eager for those talks right now than Ukraine is? I can't speak for this administration, but I'm looking at this from the standpoint of what I see on the ground, what the Ukrainians have been able to achieve and what they've not been able to achieve. I don't see the Ukrainians pushing the Russians back across the borders that were Ukrainian borders before the invasion of 2014. So that means moving to getting the Russians out of Crimea and getting the Russians out of the Donbass and then reclaiming the landmass. I don't see that happening in the near term. And there's a mismatch between ends and means. Zelensky has established maximalist objectives, which means all Russians gone. Mm -hmm. What NATO is doing is phenomenal, but it's maintaining this type of fight. And I think ultimately there will be Russians on Ukrainian soil when right. this ends, however we define end. We have to leave it there, the conversation there. Uh, Ambassador, I see you uh, shaking your head, but we have run out of time. Really appreciate you joining us tonight. Uh, as always, enjoy hearing your expertise. General Spider Marks, Ambassador William Taylor, thank you.